everyone. Myself for Dr. M. Lakshmi Prasad, working as a professor in CSC in Institute of Paranatural Engineering, Hyderabad. In this video, I'm going to discuss uh, about the basic concepts of this uh, graph theory. So the very first thing is that. So what is a graph theory? So normally these graphs are going to be used to model the pairwise relationship between the objects. And generally a network can be represented by a graph and many practical problems can be solved easily in terms of graph theory. So the graphs are going to be used to model the pairwise relationship between the objects and generally a network can be represented in the form of a graph and here uh, many practical problems also going to be solved in the form of this graph. So when it comes to the basic concepts of this graph theory, uh, the very first definition is that so the graph is nothing but a collection of nodes and edges and it should be denoted by g is equal to b comma e. So where e should be should be the nodes and e should be the edges. So that one what we call it as a link some arcs between the pairwise of nodes and graph parameters that should be n equal to uh, number of vertices and is equal to number of edges. So here what I am going to say that is so a graph is nothing but a collection of uh, nodes which is nothing but vertices or points and, and these edges what can I able to call it as links and arcs. So normally these links are going to be established between the two vertices and the graph size parameter should be uh, where n should be the number of vertices and m should be the number of edges. So what is a vertex and what is an edge? So the vertex and other name what we are able to call it as a node. So there should be the basic element and they should be drawn as a node or dot. And then the vertex set is normally denoted by V of G or B or and we also represent that V sub X G. So whatever the graph is there. So in this graph. So this one what we called as a vertex or node and this should be the basic element of the graph and sometimes this node can also be represented in the form of a dot as well and then the vertex set is normally denoted by where V of G is equal to A comma B comma C comma D and or can also represent as V is equal to A B C D or I can able to write V sub X G also as A B C. So the edges and aux, so a set of two elements is going to be considered and a drawn a line which is going to be connecting between the two vertices and these vertices are also called as N vertices or N points. And the edge set of G is usually denoted by E of G and which in term represented as E and then E of G. Okay, so this should be what we are able to call it as an H or arc. So a, a line is going to be drawn between the two vertices, uh, which are able to call it as in two endpoints. And the edge set of G is usually denoted by E of G, and then I can also write it as E and E suffix G. So these are the elements, uh, these are the terms, the norm, uh, so these are the nomenclature that is going to represent the edge set of graph. So here the edge set is going to be represented as. So E1, E2, E3 and E4 I'm going to mention it. So like this I can able to write or a similar fashion I can able to write A, B, B, C, C, D and then D as well.
okay. And neighboring node. So what is the neighborhood? So the neighborhood means for any node V, the set of nodes that is going to be connected by an edge is called neighborhood, and it should also be represented as an Okay. So for any node V, the set of nodes it is going to be connected by an edge, and that should be called as neighborhood, and it should also be represented as an And graph. So this should be a simple example of presenting a graph here and the set of, so n, what should be n in this case, so the number of vertices is 6 and number of edges should be 7 and this one, the vertex set is going to be represented as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and edge is going to be represented as 1, 2, 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 5 and then 3, 4, 4, 5 and 4, 6. So the n of 4 is going to be presented as neighborhood of 4 that should be write it as 6, 5 and then 3. So what is the neighborhood of 4? So that is the 6 and then 5 and then 3. So like this we are going to be write it. Then edge types. So here the edge the, uh, types is nothing but undirected edge, directed edge and then weighted edge. So the undirected edge means the distance between the two cities and two friendship should be undirected. So directed means so there should be the edge is going to have the source or what we call I will be called as an head or origin and the target I am going to consider that should be tail and the destination. So uh, this one, the weighted uh, means that usually the weight is going to be associated in the each edge here. So let us consider the graph G. So in this graph G, so this should be the undirected graph so because uh, the edges are not going to maintain any kind of directions here. So that's why it should be an undirected graph. And suppose if I am going to consider another graph in such a way that where the edges is going to maintain the directions in this case, then it should be called as a, a directed graph. And weighted means that, so the weighted graph or weighted undirected graph. Suppose if a graph is going to hold the weights like this, then it should be called as weighted undirected graph. And similarly, what are the weights that are assigned to each uh, edge in the case of directed graph? So this one what we call it as a weighted directed graph. So empty graph or edgeless graph. So empty graph or edgeless graph means that So graph is going to have uh, only the vertex, it does not have any kind of edges, then it should be called as a empty graph or null graph. That means no nodes, obviously no edge, each one what we call it as a null graph here. So when the graph does not have any kind of nodes and then any kind of edge, then it should be called as a null graph. An empty graph means that which is go not going to have any kind of edges, then it should be called as an empty graph or edgeless graph. The next one is a simple graph. So, what is the simple graph here? So, the simple graph is an undirected graph without loops and any multiple edges, then it should be called as a simple graph. A graph which is not going to have any kind of undirected edges and loops then it should be called as simple. So this is the simple graph in this what we are going to say these are the uh, vertices here V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. So here uh, there is no um, kind of multiple edges in the sense so if I am going to draw like this the graph so then it should not be a simple graph. So this thing is not there and at the same time the loop is also not going to be there. So this is the cell groups. So this kind of things if the graph is not going to have then it should be 
a simple graph. For simple graph, the degree of di should be 2 into mod of di. An undirected graph means that the edges is going to maintain the direction, then it should be called as a directed graph. So here in this one, so these are the multiple, so this should be the node here and this should be the loop and this should be the multiple edges. So whenever the graph is going to have a direction, then it should be called as a director graph and then uh, the normal terminology is that should this one must be called as a node and then this is this a loop, self loop and whenever there is a more than two edges are going to present in between these two edges then it will, uh, then it will be called as a multiple or some multiple edges and the weighted graph so weighted graph is a graph for which each edge is going to be associated with a weight and then suppose here so this should be the weighted and directed graph And this one is the weighted directed graph. Suppose if I'm going to consider a graph like this, so this is the weights that are going to be associated, associated with each edge of the graph. And undirected graph. So the edges is not going to have any kind of directions, and here we're going to assign the weights through that's why it should be called a weighted and directed graph. Next one is bipartite graph. So, what is bipartite graph? A vertex can be partitioned into two sets V1 and V2 such that uh, U comma V implies uh, that should be either U, uh, U belongs to V1 and V belongs to V2 or V belongs to V1 and V belongs to V2. So here uh, the vertex set is going to be partition into two disjoint sets. So this is the set V1 and this should be the set V2. So U belongs to so this is the U belongs to V1 and small V belongs to V2. <laughs> And whenever the mapping is done between the two disjoint sets, then it should be called as a bipartite graph. And then tree. So tree is nothing but an undirected graph is a tree. So if it is connected and does not contain a cycle, so undirected graph is nothing but a tree. So if it is connected and does not contain any cycle, so this one what we call as connected acyclic graph. So the two nodes is going to have exactly one part between them. Okay, there should be uh, two nodes have exactly one part between them. So under the graph is the tree if it is going to be connected and does not contain a sign. And two nodes have exactly one part between them. So here what I'm going to say that is, so there should be the graph one two three four five. And so this is the under way of representing the graph, and this should be the under representation of the graph. So here, so if I'm going to consider this one graph and this is the under graph, so if the two graphs are going to be connected by a line or edge, so then it should be called as a connected graph, a cyclic graph. Suppose if I'm going to connect this edge, then it should be connected cyclic graph. So connected cyclic graph. Subgraph. So what is the subgraph here? So the vertex set and edge set are going to be subset of the graph. So a supergraph of the graph is a graph that contains G as a subgraph here. So the supergraph of the graph is a graph that contains G as a sub. It comes to the graph representations. So here I'm going to have an adjacency matrix. 
So, which is going to be used to represent the graph here. So, here in this case, so we are going to consider n by n matrix uh, with a u comma b equal to 1 if the movie is an h and diagonal entries or self links or the loops and then the symmetric matrix for the undirected graphs. So, if I am going to consider a graph, so we are going to consider the rows as an vertex A and columns as an vertex A. Here what I am going to say that is, so if I am going to consider, so there is a H from 1 to 1, so that's why it should be 0. I have H from 1 to 2 and 1 to 3. So that's why it should be 1 and 3. So if there is no other edge that is going to be connected with 1. So that's why these and all should be the zeros. Similarly, if I'm going to consider 5 in this case. So here the edge is connected between 2, 3, 4, and as well as 6. So the money all should be 0. Similarly, I'm going to consider 8. So the edge is connected between 3 and 7. So that's why. So let us consider uh, this should be the way of representing the adjacency matrix of the graph. Suppose if I am going to consider another graph here, so ABCD. So in this ABCD, so how the matrix is going to be presented? So I am going to consider uh, the vertices as the rows and vertices as the columns. So here in this case, uh, I have an edge from A to B, A to D, and then A to C. So A, B, D, it should be. And from this, in this graph, so again I am going to have B to A, B to D. So uh, this should be the under level I created in the adjacency matrix. And similarly, if I am going to consider C here, so A, C to A, C to D. So this should be under. And for D, what I'm going to consider is that so B A C. B A C. So like this, we are going to be considering the adjacency matrix of the linear. So instant graph. So instant graph means that so here we're going to map between the vertex set and as well as the edge set. So in that adjacency matrix, we are going to consider vertex by vertex, it should, number of rows should be the vertices and number of columns should be the vertices. But here in incident matrix, uh, we are going to consider the rows as the vertex and the columns as the under vertex. So in this one, so consider 1, 2, so, so for the vertex 1, so what are the edges that are connected 1, 2 and then 1, 5. So that's why it should be 1. So remaining all should be 0. Similarly, we're going to consider 4. What are the edges that are connected? So 4, 5, or 4, it should be 4, 5, and 3, 4, and 4, 6. 4, 6, 4, 5, and 3, 4. So remaining all should be the 0. So like this, we're going to represent in incident matrix. So incident matrix is going to be done mapping between the vertices set and then edge set. An adjacency list. So, what is this adjacency list here? So, here the edge list and adjacency list. So, what are the edges list we are going to have? So, one, two, and then we are going to have two multiple edges, and then we are going to have two, three, two, five, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, three, five. So, in adjacency list. So what are the nodes that are going to have? So that one is going to be listed here. So for the node one, so what I'm going to have should be one, two, and two, two, two. So under node list, what I'm going to have two, three, five, three, three, four, three, five, and then five, three, four. So, what are the edge list for the weighted graph here? So, let us consider 
the vertices what I'm going to have one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So for one, what I'm going to do, I have only one edge that is going to be connected, so that's why it should be two, and the weight is one point two. So for two, so what are the edges that are connected? That should be four, and weight is point two. 0 0.2 and then for 3 so there is no edge is going to that's why it should be null and the 4 so there should be an edge 5 is the node that is connected and point 3 and for 5 it is 4 and then it should be point 4 so like this we are going to connect the edges of this written graph and then comes to graph terminologies. So here we are going to consider global terms that is going to be referred by the whole graph and the local term is going to be referred by the single node in the graph. So first one is going to be the connected and then isolated vertices. So what is the connected? So connected is nothing but the two vertices are said to be connected if there is a part between them and then isolated vertex is nothing but not connected. <coughs> so the two vertices are going to be connected if there is a part. Suppose this is one graph and this is another graph and this is another graph. So if I'm going to connect this or this graph, then I can able to say this graph is going to be connected. So once there is no link that is exists between them, they should be non-connected. And isolated vertex is the only vertex, so it is not to go into any kind of edges. And the next one, adjacency nodes. So here the two nodes are going to be adjacent if they are going to be connected by an edge. Okay, so the two nodes are going to be adjacent if they are going to be connected by an edge. So if an edge then we can able to say that E and B are the adjacent or nineties. An H where the two vertices are same, then it should be called as a group or self. Okay. So that where uh, there should be an H where the two vertices are same, then it should be called as a loop or self group. And the two nodes are going to be adjacent if they are going to connected by an H. So how can I able to write this is so if H is equal to U comma V, we can able to say that U and V are the adjacent for minus. So what is the degree? So the number of edges that are instant on a board is called as the degree of the board. Suppose if I'm going to consider this should be the undirected graph. <laughs> so in this undirected graph, so what I'm going to say that is so what is the degree of the node I want to find out? So that should be the number of edges that are connected with four, but then it will be called as the degree of the node. So the degree of four equal to so for this one, so degree of B is equal to two. So there is two edges that are connected. Similarly, what is the degree in case of directed graph? Here is that. So this one, so the in degree and now degree are an extra two parameters what I'm going to consider. So then the in degree means the number of edges that are incident on this and the number of edges that are leaving should be called as out degree. And finally we are going to calculate this uh, degree of the node as in degree plus out degree. So let us calculate this uh, degree of, what is the in degree and out degree of 1. So the out degree is 2 and in degree is 0 so, so that's why the degree of 1 is equal to 2. And for this one. So the degree of out degree is 2, so because 2 leaving edges and in degree is 2 incoming edges 2. So the degree of 2 should be 4. And similarly, I'm going to consider 3 in this case. So the in degree is 2 and then out degree is out degree is 1. So that's why it should be 4. Our next one is walk. What is the walk here? So there should be a trail. So the trail is nothing but no edge can be repeated. That should be the trail. And walk is nothing but uh, where the edges or nodes are going to be repeated. 
So the trail means you are going to visit every edge exactly once. So that should be the trail. And walk is nothing but uh, where the edges or nodes can be repeated. Okay. So the response are A, B, C, D, E. So what is the path here? So A, B, B, D. D. So this should be the closed part again, or closed work. Otherwise, I am going to go D E. And D C is under all the path. So the paths. So path is nothing but a sequence of nodes. So V one, V two, and so on again. So and then no vertex can be repeated. And the close part, what we're going to do called as a cycle. Okay, the no vertex can be repeated, and the close part, what we're going to call as a cycle. So, the length of the path and cycle is nothing but the number of edges that are listed in the path or cycle. So, that should be the length of the path. Okay, so the length of the path or cycle is nothing but the number of edges that should be listed in the path and cycle, what we're going to call as the length of the path. So here the walks and paths. So the walk of the length is nothing but so one to two, two to three, three to four. So this is nothing but the path. And length of the walk I want to find it out from one to six. So what is the path now? So one to five. Five to four, four to six. So this is one part what I identified. And similarly, I'm going to identify one to two, two to three, three to four, four to six. So this is the under part what I'm going to identify. So similarly, I want to find the part from six to two. So from six to two, what is the part I want to find it out? So from this point. 6 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 2, and 6 to 4, 4 to 3, and this is the path now that I identified. So the path is nothing but the sequence of nodes, and no vertex can be repeated, and the closed path what can be called as a cycle. And the length of the path and cycle is nothing but the number of edges that is going to be stored in the path and cycle. So what is the cycle here? So cycle is nothing but a closed path. And if it is closed, so it x equal to y. And the cycles are going to be denoted by c of k, where k should be the num chromatic number of nodes in the cycle. <laughs> okay, so the closed path, what can I be called as cycle? So b c d a. And these cycles are going to report uh, denoted by C of K, where K should be the number of nodes. So C P, C Q, and then C. So what is the shortest path here? So shortest path is the path between the two nodes that is going to have the shortest edge length. Okay. The shortest path is the path between the two nodes that have the shortest length. And length is nothing but the number of edges, and distance between uh, is nothing but it is the distance between U and V that should be the length of the shortest path between them. Mm -hmm. Diameter of the graph is the length of the longest short path between the pair of nodes in the graph. So, shortest path is the path between the two nodes that have the shortest length. And the length is nothing but the number of edges, and the distance is then nothing but the length of the shortest path between them. So that should be about the graph uh, basics of the graph theory. So here we're going to be discussed. There should be a graph which is nothing but a collection of nodes and edges, and graph. Size parameters will be uh, m should be the number of vertices and m should be the number of edges. So here I'm going to represent this vertex edges and neighborhood. 
So this should be graph the uh, example what I construct. Uh, the M should be the now six and M should be the seven. And the neighborhood of four should be six, five, and then three. And there should be different types of edge types. So like undirected, directed, and weighted. So undirected means that the edges is not going to have any kind of directions, whereas the directed mode then the edges is going to have the directions. And weighted means that the edges go, uh, the edges go to carry the weights. So whenever there is no edge, then the graph should be called as empty graph or edgeless graph. Now null graph is nothing but no no nodes and then no edge is going to be constructed. So simple graph is undirected graph, and the digraph what can be able to call as a digraph and weighted graph. Bipartite graph. So bipartite graph means that the vertex set is going to be classified into two type, two sets. So V1 and then V2. So what is the tree here? So the tree is nothing but uh, a undirected graph, and it does not contain any cycle. It's nothing but a tree. So a graph, and then it comes to graph representations. I explained this adjacency matrix. So where we are going to construct the vertex as the rows and columns and instant matrix what I am going to construct should be the number of vertices and number of edges and adjacency list where I can able to represent the nodes, what are the nodes uh, that are connected and comes to graph terminologies we are going to see what should be connected graph and isolated vertex and adjacent nodes on self loops and then loops and now we are going to calculate the degree of the graph in case of undirected graph and directed graph. So in undirected graph, the number of edges that are connected to vertex is nothing but the degree of the graph. And the number of edges that are connected or number of edges that are leaving that should be connected as uh, directed graph, uh, degree of vertex in directed graph. <laughs> And there should be a difference between the walk and trail. So walk is nothing but where the edges are not going to be repeated, where there's some trail, the edges are not going to be repeated. And path is nothing but a sequence of nodes. And then in the cycle is nothing but where the ending vertex uh, starting and then ending vertex is same, then there should be a cycle. And it should be the form of chromatic number C of K, where, should, where K should be the a number of nodes and the shortest path is the path that is going to find between the number of nodes and the number of edges in between them that should be the shortest path thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates